Hey everybody, welcome to PC Perspective. I'm Ryan Shrout. Today, we are here to finally, finally talk about the final product that is known as the AMD Radeon R9 Fury X graphics card. Ta-da! Let's be honest, you probably know everything about this video card as it is in terms of its design and its GPU and the memory technology. But what you don't know yet is about performance and what our opinion is on whether or not you should buy it. Quick recap for those of you that are just coming into the game here. This is based on AMD's brand new Fiji GPU. It is still 28 nanometer uh, process based GPU, but it is uh, larger. It has 4,096 stream processors. Uh, it has a rated clock speed of 1,050 megahertz, which results in a peak theoretical uh, compute capability of 8.6 teraflops which is really quite uh, amazing when you just say it out loud like that. You have 256 texture units, 64 ROPs, which is kind of interesting when we look at the performance side of things. Uh, you have four gigs of memory uh, that is using the new uh, high bandwidth memory, HBM as it's known. We've talked about this in previous videos and on previous podcasts. It is essentially stacked die memory that shares uh, an interposer with the GPU on the kind of the package of the GPU itself. The result is they're allowed, they can build smaller GPUs, they're using less PCB space, and much wider memory buses as well. This has a 4,096-bit memory bus, for example. That's huge, but it's only running at 500 megahertz. We're used to, you know, 1.5, 1.75 gigahertz clock speeds with GDDR5. This is using HBM, so total bandwidth is actually 512 gigabytes per second, which is significantly higher than what the uh, Radeon R9 290X had before that. Uh, it had 320 gigabytes per second. So you're getting a drastic increase, but not as big as maybe you would think the move from a 384-bit to a 4,000-bit or so memory bus might actually get you. Uh, it is a, in terms of kind of design, it is, it's a small form factor design. Is this, I think this is like a six inch or an eight inch PCB. Uh, the, the Nano is a six inch, just is a little bit longer than that. Uh, but obviously you have this kind of self-contained water cooler that has to go along with it. We'll talk about that in a second. Looking around the graphics card, you have two eight pin power connectors. Even though this is a single GPU card, uh, it does, have supports or requires at least two 8-pin power connectors. The GPU TDP is only 275 watts. If you uh, know your PCI Express power math, you'll know that two 8-pins plus the PCI Express bus actually goes up to 375. AMD claims that will help you with overclocking down the road. Uh, you have, uh, I think, an actually a really, really nice design, just physical design to this card. Uh, it is a multi-piece aluminum, as they call it, with a black nickel kind of coloration and plating to the aluminum uh, in many places, and then a soft touch black finish kind of along the top here and along the sides as well uh, that actually, I think, makes it look as good as, if not better, than the designs that NVIDIA has had basically since the GTX 690 days uh, in terms of industrial design and look and style and feel. Uh, you've got uh, Radeon LEDs up top that illuminate, or the word Radeon that illuminates when it's powered on. On the back, right behind the power connectors, you have these uh, little LED lights that are called GPU tech. It's basically an activity monitor. The more lights that are lit up, the more horsepower that your uh, GPU is using, right? I don't know about how accurate that happens to be, but it's pretty cool. And there's little dip switches back here if you want to change it between red or blue LEDs. Ironically, not green. You cannot use green LEDs for that, but uh, I guess we don't really expect them to do so. If you look at the front panel here for display connectivity, you're going to get three full-size DisplayPort connections and one HDMI connection, and then no exhaust either on that. You just see the, the word Radeon kind of printed across there, which is pretty neat. Note that that HDMI port is 1.4a. It is not HDMI 2.0, which is a, a fairly disappointing fact, right? Especially considering, you know, how, how much AMD is talking about the Fiji GPU being able to be used in small form factor machines, which tend to lean towards, you know, well, you can put this in your home theater. Uh, it won't support 4K HDMI 60 hertz, right, capability. So that is a, a fallback that this card has compared to what Maxwell offers with HDMI 2.0 support. Um, Otherwise, I mean, it's, it's a very good looking graphics card. You do have to worry about this, this water block part right here, the radiator. Uh, you've got uh, a cooler master designed and built water cooler that kind of comes out the back here. The tubing and cables are actually fairly long, so you should have 
no issues, except in maybe the most extreme cases of finding a place to mount this 120 millimeter radiator and fan combination, either to the top of your case, to the, the back outlet, or maybe even the front inlet if you want, if your case is small enough for that. Uh, it is a kind of a double thick radiator, a little bit thicker than normal, so you might run into some spacing issues with very small form factor cases, so just keep that in mind uh, when you go to do those types of designs. Um, let's talk about performance, right? This is what is maybe new to everybody here. The Fury X is not faster than the GTX 980 Ti. We'll just go ahead and put it out there like that. It's uh, a faster in a couple of games, but it's actually slower in more games than it is uh, faster than. And in those instances where it's slower, it actually tends to be more slow than it is more fast over the 980 Ti, if that makes any sense, right? So uh, it is very competitive with the 980 Ti. We looked at Crisis 3 and GTA 5 and Battlefield 4 and all the games that we normally benchmark with. Uh, and if I looked down at my notes here, the GTA 5, for example, the, the Fury X did not have a very good showing. It was significantly slower than the 980 Ti and the Titan X. But if you looked at Metro Last Light and Crisis 3, the Fury X had a, a small lead in those instances, right? Not a, not a drastic one, but at least a small lead. So performance-wise, even though it's brand new, it looks nice, it's based on a completely new GPU architecture, it's not running away with the benchmarks, uh, which is, is obviously a downside, but it's not, I think, a, a, a death hit for it or anything like that, right? You're, you're still going to be able to uh, compete with the 980 Ti with this card, and that's really what AMD needs to do because they didn't have any competition at all in that space with the exception of the 295X2 dual GPU card from last generation that uh, had its own kind of series of issues when you get into Crossfire and any kind of multi-GPU configuration. Uh, the 4K results look a little bit better than the 2560 by 1440 results. Uh, the more GP, more pixels you have to process, the, the better that the 4000 stream processors in this machine or this GPU can handle it. So that's actually an advantage there. But you do have to worry about that 4 gig frame buffer when you start getting into 4K resolutions and kind of those ultra high image quality settings. We were, if we, you know, we tried to, if we really wanted to, you could find instances like in Grand Theft Auto V where if you turn everything up to its maximum uh, at 4K resolution, you could make this card start to chug at single frames per second while the 980 Ti with six gigs of memory instead of four gigs was able to play perfectly fine. But now to be fair, you could also turn things up a little bit more and make the 980 Ti chug down at single frames per second. So it's all about balancing the uh, memory, cap cap uh, memory capacity of the card with the image quality settings that you actually set in your game. Uh, in terms of power consumption, this is actually a, a big improvement for AMD. This uses about 20 watts more than the 980 Ti. Okay, it's within, within range, right? It's pretty reasonable, but it actually uses 40 watts less power than the Radeon R9 290X, considering you get significantly more performance out of this card than you do the 290X. That's actually a, a huge win for AMD in that regard. Part of that comes down to you know the new GPU, the new Fiji architecture, comes down to some of that being HBM and the high bandwidth memory advantages you get in terms of power draw and the you know gigabytes per watt, gigabytes per second per watt advantage that HBM offers over GDDR5. So that's a big plus. It's not a power hungry beast, uh, but one of the interesting advantages of of this water cooler is that it keeps the GPU and actually it cools not just the GPU, notice there are no fans on this, it cools GPU, the VRM, uh, all that stuff on there is all cooled by, uh, by the self-contained water cooler kit here. But by keeping the GPU very cool, like in the 50 to 55 C range, even while gaming, it helps reduce leakage of the GPU, which means it can operate at the frequencies that it needs to operate at to be competitive with Nvidia's flagship parts while maintaining lower power consumption. I think you'll find that if you were to take the same piece of hardware, cool it with kind of an off the shelf uh, aftermarket GPU air cooler, right? Uh, that power consumption would go up and uh, you, would, you would find that to be, you know, kind of more back to what we saw with Hawaii. So they made a decision here, both I think for looks and style, as well as to keep the temperature down and improve their power consumption stance against NVIDIA. Uh, sound wise, everything is, is fairly quiet at idle. It's a little bit, louder than the 980 Ti at idle, but under load, uh, because of the water cooler, because of the, the high quality fan that they use on the design, it's actually fairly quiet. The one caveat to that is the pump inside of this has kind of a very 
specific high-pitched sound that, em that it emits, and I've talked with several of other reviewers about it, and we kind of all have seen the same thing, at least a handful of us, ha uh, of us have. So I know it's not just isolated to my sample. Uh, when I asked AMD about it, they said that uh, they recognized it, but they found a way to work with the cooler uh, distributor, Cooler Master essentially, to figure out how to lower that noise uh, and, and kind of reduce or remove it completely from the Fury X cards that ship out to users. Now, I will say, even with the high-pitched sound, that was really with an open test bench with the card kind of sitting next to me. I think if you put that in a case, uh, you know, and you either put that a little bit off to the side or underneath your desk, I really don't think that that sound is going to kind of permeate through that. It's not, doesn't sound to me to be like that type of, uh, that type of effect. So it's there, it could be annoying, chances are it won't be that big of a, of a deal really. Pricing, 650 bucks. That is what AMD is asking for the Fury X graphics card, the exact same price as the 980 Ti, probably not a coincidence. Um, I will also say we have questions about availability. There are lots of rumors going around at some kind of very limited stock of the Fury X going to be available throughout the rest of 2015. I don't know if that's true. Um, we'll know if that's true based on how high these prices kind of get jacked up. If you see Newegg and Amazon selling these cards for $800 or something like that uh, initially, and that stays with it, then there may be kind of a, an availability issue with the card in the long term. But $650, I think, is, is, a, is, a, is the correct price for this. Even though it doesn't beat the GTX 980 Ti in terms of performance, it offers, I think, improved aesthetics. It has a unique design that you could put into, you know, small form factor cases uh, that have room for a water cooler. You can do some interesting things with this that you maybe couldn't do with the 980 Ti or any of those longer graphics cards like the 290X or 390X even. So um, it's, it's got the flagship level of performance. It doesn't beat the 980 Ti, but it's, it's almost there. It's kind of right there. And AMD desperately needed uh, a product to compete in that space. Now we have a lot more testing to do with the Fury X in terms of both benchmarks. We're trying to get a second one in so we can see how well they crossfire and how multi-GPU scaling goes. Um, but I, I come away mostly pretty happy with the AMD Fury X. Could it have been better? Yes, but I would like to have seen performance a little bit higher. Could we have sacrificed going from 55C to 75C with the water cooler and then beat the 980 Ti? If that would have been possible, I think that would be uh, a good thing to do. And the truth is with overclocking, it doesn't look like you have that much kind of uh, voltage headroom on this card. That's some other stuff we need to spend some more time on is the overclocking capability of this product. That was a long discussion about the AMD Fury X. There's even more discussion and benchmarks and photos at PCPer.com where we have the full written review. I highly encourage you guys to go there and check it out. Look at all the individual games, the different resolutions that we test with this, as well as you know 3D Mark, power consumption, all that stuff is included in there. Thank you guys very much for watching. We'll see you next time. I'm Ryan Trout.